Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Learn With Me. I'm Deborah Hansen. Now we're going to go through the key terms for 2.2. I already did the video on the explanation of the CED question, as well as some examples. This is just going to be key terms and definition and an a real life example. So if you like the videos, please like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. Try to get to that 10,000. I know I have a long way to go, but please help me do that. Um, so today we're going to look at the key terms 2.2 thinking, problem solving, judgments, and decision making for AP psychology. Okay, whoops. Okay, so the CED question that this is all based on is explain how psychological concepts and theories account for thinking, problem solving, judgment, and decision making. So we're going to go through all of these key terms. They, we did talk about them quite a bit in the other video. Well, not quite a bit, but we did talk about them. But now I'm just going to do them just the definition and real life example. So let's get going with concepts. So the definition of concepts is concepts are mental categories that group objects, events, or ideas that share similar characteristics. They help us organize information in our minds, they simplify our understanding of the world, and they assist us in predicting the world around us by categorizing new experiences and objects. So for example, the concept of dog includes all the animals that fit certain criteria like having four legs, fur, and barking. Even though dogs can vary greatly in size, shape, and color, our concept of dog allows us to identify a Chihuahua and a German Shepherd as both being dogs. This mental categorization helps us recognize and understand and respond appropriately to different dogs we encounter. Next one is prototypes. Prototypes are the best or most typical examples of a particular category or concept. They represent the mental image or the epitome of a particular category that we use as a reference point for comparing other objects, and then we decide if, what, if they belong in the same category. So for example, when thinking of the concept bird, the prototype might be a robin or a blue jay or for many people, depending on where you live in the world, right, of course. So this prototype includes features commonly associated with birds, such as wings, the ability to fly. So when we see a new creature that resembles their prototype, like the prototype of the robin or blue jay or whatever you kind of had up in your mind, they're more likely to recognize that and categorize it as a bird. Assimilation. Assimilation is a cognitive process in which individuals integrate new information into pre-existing frameworks or categories of understanding. It's part of how we adapt to new experiences by fitting them into what we already know. So a child knows what a dog is and has a mental concept of dogs based on previous encounters. When the child sees a wolf for the first time and calls it a dog, they're assimilating the wolf into their existing categories of four-legged furry animals that resemble dogs. This occurs because the new animal shares enough characteristics with their concept of a dog to fit into that pre-existing category. Accommodation. Accommodation is a cognitive process in psychology where an individual adjusts their existing mental frameworks or schemas to incorporate new information that cannot be assimilated into their pre-existing schemas. This adaptation allows for more accurate understanding of the world. So here we go, an example. A child has a schema for vehicles that include cars and trucks, which they understand to have wheels and move on roads. But when the child first sees a motorcycle, they might initially try to fit it into their car schema. However, because a motorcycle is significantly different, like having two wheels and a different shape, the child needs to modify their vehicle schema or create new ones to accommodate motorcycles. This adjustment represents accommodation, where the child expands their understanding of what constitutes a vehicle. Algorithms. An algorithm is a set of step-by-step -step instructions or rules designed to perform a specific task or solve a specific problem. These instructions are clear, unambiguous, ensuring consistent results each time we use this algorithm. A common example of an algorithm is a cooking recipe. For instance, to bake a cake, the recipe provides specific steps involving mixing ingredients in a set order baking at a certain temperature and for a specific duration. If you follow these steps exactly, you should ideally produce the same cake every time. Another example is an algorithm used by a GPS device to calculate the fastest route from one location to another based on distance, traffic, and road conditions. And we all know how to use Google Maps and that is an algorithm. Heuristic. 
A heuristic is a mental shortcut that simplifies decision-making, allowing for quick and efficient problem solving. These shortcuts help people make timely decisions without needing to process all the available information. So for example, if you're choosing a restaurant for dinner, you might select one based on its proximity to your current location, rather than comparing all the possible options. This rule of thumb saves time and effort in making a decision. Availability heuristic. The availability heuristic is a mental shortcut that relies on immediate, easily recalled examples when making decisions or judgments. The easier it is to think of something, the more common or important we perceive it to be. When, when deciding which natural disaster is more dangerous, you might think of an earthquake because of recent news stories, even though statistically floods are deadlier. This overestimation is due to the availability heuristic as the recent memory of earthquakes make them more severe or more frequent. Mental set. A mental set is a tendency to approach problems in a particular way. They're often based on past experiences and successes. This approach can be helpful when similar problems arise, but it may also prevent seeing alternative solutions when, when the context changes. So imagine you're always, you always solve puzzles by starting from the outside and working your way in. That's how I do it. <laughs> this strategy works well until you encounter a puzzle that requires beginning from the center to solve more efficiently. Your mental set of starting from the outside may hinder your ability to quickly adapt to the new puzzle type, illustrating how mental sets can limit problem solving approaches. I definitely would have a hard time doing that if I did my next puzzle like that. Priming. Priming is a psychological phenomenon where exposure to one stimulus influences the response to a subsequent stimulus without conscious guidance or intention. This process can affect perceptions, behaviors, and responses to later stimuli, often making them quicker or more likely. So for example, if you watch a TV show about cooking, you might be quicker to recognize kitchen-related words like pan or boil in a conversation shortly after. This happens because the cooking show primed your brain to be more attuned to cooking-related concepts, thus influencing you to interpret and respond to sub subsequent information. Framing. Framing is a cognitive bias where people decide on options based on whether the options are presented with positive or negative connotations. It affects how an individual reacts to a particular choice in different ways depending on how it's presented. So for example, a doctor tells a patient that a particular surgical procedure has a 90% success rate. The patient feels positive about the procedure. However, if the doctor instead said that the procedure has a 10% failure rate, the, the patient might then view the same procedure more negatively. Even though both statements convey the same information, this change Change in perspective based on how the options are framed can significantly affect our decision-making skills. Gambler's fallacy. The gambler's fallacy is the erroneous belief that something happens more frequently than normal. It is less likely to happen in the future despite each event being independent. So in a coin, a coin toss, if heads comes up several times in a row, someone might think tails is due to appear. However, each coin toss is independent and the odds remain the same regardless of the previous results. Sunk cost functions. The sunk cost fun a fallacy is the tendency to continue investing in a decision or action because of the resources already spent, rather than considering whether continuing it is in the best choice to move forward. So if you've spent money on non-refundable con non concert tickets, but you're kind of feeling sick on that day of the event, you might still go because you, you're wasting money, basically. And even though staying home would be the healthier decision. Executive functions. Executive functions are a set of cognitive processes that allow an individual to plan, focus attention, remember instructions, and manage multiple tasks effectively. These functions are critical for goal-directed behavior and problem solving. An example of executive functions in action, it, sorry, in action is organizing a project. You might break down the project into smaller tasks, prioritize which tasks need to you can need to complete first, manage your time effectively, and then adapt your plan in case there's any unexpected challenges that come up. All these actions involve executive functions, helping you to achieve your goal in an organized and efficient manner. Critical thinking. Critical thinking is the ability to analyze information objectively and make a reasoned judgment. It involves evaluating evidence, 
questioning assumptions, and considering different perspectives before reaching a conclusion. So if you're reading a news article, instead of accepting the information at face value, you might question the sources, consider potential biases, and compare it with other reports on the same topic. This process helps you form a well-rounded opinion based on careful analysis rather than just accepting the initial information. Creativity. Creativity is the ability to think of a new, original idea or approach by connecting different concepts in innovative ways. So creating a smartphone app that helps users reduce screen time by making it a fun game is an example of using creativities to solve a common problem in a unique way. Divergent thinking. Divergent thinking is the process of generating many different ideas or solutions for a single problem, emphasizing creativity and variety. So for instance, when asked to think of uses for a brick, you might suggest ideas like building a wall, using it as a doorstop, or making it a paperweight. This shows multiple creative possibilities beyond the obvious use. Functional fixedness. Functional fixedness is a cognitive bias that limits a person's ability to see an object being used in any way other than its traditional intended purpose. This mental block can hinder problem solving and creativity. An example of functional fixedness is when someone needs a screwdriver but doesn't have one, and they fail to realize that they could use a coin or a knife to turn the screw. They're stuck thinking that the only way to get the job done is to use the screwdriver, even though other objects would work just as well. Okay, so now we're just going to go through, I'm just going to flash those words on the screen, check your notes, try to see if you can remember what the definition is, or even an example of it, because this will help you on test day when you need to apply these uh, concepts into your, uh, M uh, into your FRQs, your MCQs, anything that's going to come up on exam day. Okay, here we go. So you can pause it after every word, okay? Concept. Prototypes. Assimilation, accommodation, algorithms, heuristic, availability heuristic, mental set, priming, framing. Gambler's fallacy, sunk cost functions, executive functions, critical thinking, creativity, divergent thinking. Functional fixedness. And that's all I have for today for all the key terms for 2.2. I hope you found this helpful. Please let me know in the comments if this is helping you. I'm going to keep going with these videos. I know that there's not very much out there with the new curriculum right now. That's why I'm trying to really hurry for my own students as well that I tutor uh, to get these done. And I thought it's a great way to put them out on YouTube so they can help even more students. So please like and subscribe if you're finding these helpful and leave me a comment. I really like to see the comments and I answer them all. Have a great day, everyone. See you next time.